Are you tired of just playing eighth notes on a closed hi-hat for every single one of your grooves? Well, stick around because in this series I'm going to teach you step by step how to gain some real freedom on your hi-hat. Aha! Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mike Klavitsky. Today we're going to start working on hi-hat freedom. So if you can play a groove with eighth notes on your hi-hat and that's about all you can do, this is a great place for you to start. And if you can do a lot more than that, still check this video out because I think there'll be a couple of hi-hat opening techniques that might give you a bit of a challenge, even if you've been playing for a while. Today I'm going to take a really simple beat, just kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, with eighth notes on the hi-hat, and we're going to systematically walk through a process of learning how to open the hi-hat first uh, on the eighth notes, with the bass drum, by itself, with the snare drum, with a kind of a constant ostinato type thing, and then with some exercises at the end uh, to give you some real freedom with opening the hi-hat while you're playing eighth notes. Now I'm only applying this to one beat, so it's your responsibility, once you kind of learn the technique and the process that I went through to do this, to apply this to all of your other grooves. Go ahead and click down and find the PDF for this lesson so you can follow along, and I'm just gonna walk through that PDF step by step and we're gonna try to get some freedom with uh, opening our hi-hat. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not so you can get more videos like this. Also, I'm doing a stick giveaway that's almost over. You can check out my stick giveaway video. I'll link to that down here in the description as well and hopefully you can win those sticks. So, here we go. All these hi-hat variations are gonna be based off of this beat. Great, and we're gonna start opening the hi-hat uh, in different spots along the beat. Now, I've, I've organized the PDF as you go through it in what I think is uh, difficulty levels as we go through, and I'll kind of point each one out as we go so you can see. Now, in order to open the hi-hat properly, you're always gonna leave pressure on the hi-hat as you're playing, and when it comes time to open the hi-hat, you're just gonna either lean back or lift some weight off of your foot, depending on if you're heel down or heel up. Make sure that your core and everything is kind of centered over your seat so that you can pick up your left leg without falling over. You don't want to be kind of doing this kind of thing. So make sure that you're sitting uh, at a place where you're st you feel stable and your, your core's in the middle. And you're just going to open the hi-hat and you're gonna close the hi-hat. Now, the trick to this, this is super important when you're opening the, and closing the hi-hat, especially when you're first learning how to do this. And even if you've been doing this for a while, you might have been doing it wrong. So. It's super important that when you close the hi-hat and you hit the hi-hat with a stick, that that happens at the exact same moment. So you want it to sound like this. Not like this. Or not like this either. So one, I'm hitting just slightly before I'm closing, and then the other one I'm hitting just slightly after I'm closing. So it will be worth your time, I promise if you just work on getting that to synchronize. Closing it and hitting it at the same time. And a metronome really will help with this. If you can get that click going, click, 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 click. I'm closing the hi-hat and hitting it at the same time. That metronome will really give your ear and your mind something to focus on while you're closing it. So, as long as you can close the hi-hat cleanly with your stick and open it, and close it, you're ready to move on. So let's move through this PDF. The first example, we're gonna open the hi-hat on the end of one, and when the hi-hat closes, it's gonna close with the bass drum. This makes it a little easier uh, to learn because both feet are coming down at the same time. And you should already be used to locking that bass drum with your hi-hat from playing your beat, because your bass drum, your bass drum's always locked with your hi-hat anyway. So now we're just gonna add the left foot so they both can go together, so it's not any extra coordination. So we're just coming down like that. Both feet are coming down at the same time. Hat and bass drum are going to come down at the same time that the stick hits. So the hi-hat's going to open on the and of four, and then on beat one, both feet go down and the stick hits the hi-hat. So here's what that example sounds like. One and two and three and four and one. Now if you want to kind of lean back and then fall forward, at first, that's okay, but we want to eliminate that as much as possible. We want to make sure that our weight is over our seat and that the core is kind of supporting the body. So, 
Again, here's that example. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Great. Now we're going to do the exact same thing in the next B, in the next example. And this time the hi hat's going to open on the and of two. So still the hi hat's going to close with the bass drum, but then we have a bass drum immediately following that on the and of three. And that's going to sound and look like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now we're going to put those two together. So example one and example two are going to come together in example three. And we're going to end up with the hi-hat opening on the and of two and the and of four. So again, try to like be careful that you don't start rocking back and forth when you're doing this. Try to center your core over your seat. It's going to sound like this. One and two. Example, we're going to open the hi-hat and this time it's going to close with the snare drum. So we're going to have the hi-hat open and then both hands are coming down together while we close the left or we close the hi-hat with the left foot. So that's a new thing. Now we have two sticks and a hi-hat all coming down together and we don't want any flams. So we don't want or 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 something like that. You want to make sure that everything makes one sound. Bop, bop. Everything is really together. So here is example number four. So we have one, and you can just practice that until that's really locked together. If you can do that, then it should sound like this. One, Great, now we're going to put examples one, two, and three, or one, two, and four, I guess, together, and uh, we'll get this. The hi-hat's going to open three times, two times with the bass drum, or closing two times with the bass drum, and then one time with the snare drum. And I'm going to look down here and read the music just to make sure I play it right for you guys. All right, here we go. heel down and I'm just rocking my foot back to open the hi-hat like that. That way I can put a little bit of weight into my heel and I'm not falling forward and I don't have to kind of like hold myself up. I can put the weight on my heel and just rock my foot back and forth. Try that technique and see if it works for you. All right, in this next example, we're going to open the hi-hat now with a bass drum. So this is going to happen on beat three. So the bass drum is going to hit at the same time that the hi-hat's opening. So the feet are kind of opposite of each other. So the bass drum's going down and the hi-hat's coming up. So we got. Now when the hi-hat closes again, it's going to be with the snare. So you're going to have. Let me play that example for you. One and two and three. Again, make sure everything's lining up. This time we're going to add a hi-hat on, uh, on the end of one and then on the end of three. This is all stuff that you've done before, so let's give that a shot. Here we go. something that might feel a little strange. We're going to open the hi-hat on beat one with the bass drum. So it's going to be and it's going to close just by the hi-hat or just by itself on the hi-hat. And we'll play the rest of the beat. So that's the only thing we're doing this time. So and C. 
Same thing, but this time we're going to open on the and, or on the beat three. So this time we're going to open on beat three and close the hi hat and the bass drum. The feet are going to go down. So you have the bass drum going down while the hi hat's coming up, and then both feet going down. So make sure you can do that. So up, down. So we're going up, down. Open, close. Open, close. And then adding hand. Great. Let's try this example. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Now we're going to put those two examples together. Now we're going to try something a little bit more difficult. We're going to open the hi-hat on three and the and of three, so with both bass drums. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can just kind of leave the hi-hat open and go like that, or you can kind of, kind of interlace the feet and go uh, kick, hat, kick, almost like a double bass drum pattern, but you're going to be going and you're going to be closing it on the E. So you're going to play one E or one E like that. So you're going to end up playing one E. So one will be open E and So it's fitting right in between the bass drum. So that's the second way you can do it. So the first way is just and then the second way you can do it is one. You should work on both because they both have a different characteristic in the sound, um, and you want to be able to do both. So let me play the example, and I'll do it both ways. First, the simpler way, just opening the hi hat uh, and leaving it open, and then the more uh, complex way. Here we go. Now the more complex way. So I suppose that's one other variation you can do. You can do the 16th note, and then leave it open for a full eighth note. I'll play those back to back so you can hear the difference. So I hope you can hear the difference. On the second one, I'm leaving the hi-hat open for a full eighth note. So I'm saying, I'm thinking in my mind, one, E, and two. And in the other example, I'm thinking, one, E, and uh, two. Work on both of those, or all three of those. So just one, E, and then one, E, and then one, E, where you leave it open even longer. Now we're gonna add the Beat one with the bass drum with the double closing in the hi-hat. And now you have like four variations that you can do. And I'll try to play all of them um, as we're going. So I'll start with just the open hi-hat the whole time, then the 16th note hi-hat, and then I'll do the 16th note with the eighth note on the end. I'll play two of each. So that's three variations. Here we go. something new. We're going to open the hi-hat on beat number two with the snare drum. So we're going to go, uh, both hands are coming down and the hi-hat's coming up. So we have two and. So let's play that together. One and two and three and four and one and two. Now on beat two and on beat four. One 
Now we're going to do all the downbeats. So your foot's just going to constantly be going up and down. And this might be tough to find that balance, but I think you can do it. It's going to sound like this. Now on all the eighth notes. Now, if you've gone through every variation, playing these two patterns shouldn't be too hard because we've already worked out all the coordination necessary in order to be able to play these kind of ostinato patterns where the hi-hat's just continually opening. Now, I'll leave you with two variations that you can practice, and you can go uh, as far with this as you want. You can make every open hi-hat a 16th note instead of an 8th note. So you could play uh, that kind of thing. Uh, Or the other way. Notes all have value. So uh, the open hi-hat can be an eighth note and or sixteenth note. And changing that makes a groove feel completely different. So here's two hi-hat variations for you using eighth notes. Now I hope you enjoy these. So here's the penultimate measure. As Dr. B used to say all the time, she was my harmony teacher when I was in college, a long, long time ago. Uh, that means second to the last. Here we go. This is what it sounds like. And the final example. Alright guys, I hope that helps you out. If you'd like to see more hi-hat freedom type videos, please leave a like and a comment in the description saying, Hey Mike, keep going with this stuff, it's really helping. And uh, I, can, I can kind of morph this into 16th notes, opening, playing patterns on the hi-hat, different variations, all kinds of stuff. Um, all around, you know, basic grooves. Make sure you take this and you apply it to any groove that you are playing. So, I mean, you have literally like months of work here to do just with the eighth note opening techniques. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Keep practicing.